Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome into the Grand Lake and McLean podcast presented by Ingalls, the official supermarket of Grand Lake and McLean. Mac, it is week three. We have a lot of games we need to talk about, a lot of non-con, a lot of ACC versus other Power Four teams and games that I think are very important for the league. But right now, Mac, what's very important, as you can see, I'm kind of in a fall vibe with my little shirt jacket, my shacket, <laughs> and... uh you got to get to Ingalls and get some of that fall vibe stuff. You know what I mean? Like you got to just get in the moment, get in the vibe, hit the Starbucks in Ingalls, get your little PSL. You know, I, are you feeling the fall vibes, Mac? PSL. Let me ask you, you know, this. Are you, know PSL. Are, you have a wife, you know what PSL is. I for sure do. I for sure do. Um, are you a, as soon as we get to September an R month one, like pumpkins start to pop up around your house? Oh Yeah. Last weekend, I looked at Nick. I said, Nick, I haven't put my pumpkins out yet. And he goes, oh, Ooh. my. But just yeah, my indoor going? pumpkin. The problem with the South is ah, I like indoor. I want to buy pumpkins. But right. it's September 12th. And even though we've had amazing weather, I know yeah. I know we're going to hit a 90-degree day in September. Yeah. So I just have to wait. The the buying sure. the pumpkins, it's, it's an art. You know, it's a dance. You're just kind of trying to figure out the weather and when to buy those pumpkins. But I will soon, Mac. It's coming. Well, let me just ask you this. I mean, why don't you just support the economy a little better and maybe buy two sets of pumpkins, you know? One dies yeah. off, go back to Ingles, you get some more pumpkins. Well, as I said, you know what it's like to have a wife. I have a husband. And so if he knows, like, the pumpkin budget, if I'm out here spending by line, triple yeah, digits on pumpkins, we got a problem. So I'm trying to that. show some restraint, Mac. I'm trying. No question. No question. Well, the, the funny thing is Ingles does, they, they are very proactive. Like Halloween candy, yes. September 1, boom flooding it you know they're ready they're, they're ready to go and uh they've got it all for you whatever you need they also have all your tailgate stuff guys i was just in a wormhole last night of tailgating videos and cooking videos and i got so were. inspired and so jealous that i can't do that every single oh, saturday so if you're watching this and you were thinking huh you know it's a noon game maybe i won't tailgate this time do it tailgate get out there as early as you can and just live it up because these are the times of our lives, people. So go to Ingles, load up on all your stuff, and get to the tailgate. Please, we need you to do it. Do it for me, if anything. Do it for Mac. <laughs> Mac, have you thought about – I know, you know, for some of these games, like you're driving up to Virginia in a couple hours, so it's a yeah. little harder. But have you thought of just attaching the Traeger to the truck and, like, just setting up – You basically, you're right by the set. You're going yeah. over your notes, but you also have your apron on and you're, yeah. you know, smoking some meat. Have you thought about this? Let me just tell you, it has crossed my mind too many times about <laughs> doing it. But the hassle of like unloading, yeah. loading alone at the house, it's just, it's, it's a little I insurmountable. Know. But one day, one day we're going to do it. And quite frankly, um, I've heard whispers. We might be in Tiger Town again soon. And if that happens, I'm going to go uh, like a week early. And I'm bringing the trigger. We're doing it. So that yeah. that will happen 1,000%. Love, Love it. And you can hit the Ingles on Issaquina. So let's get exactly. to a message from our friends at Ingles, and then we're going to talk these games. It's time to discover the convenience and time savings of contact-free pickup with Ingles Curbside. Just visit shop.ingles-markets.com or download the app. And your Ingles personal shopper gets to work with specialized training on how to select the freshest items for a pre-scheduled pickup. They'll even text you with updates. You pull up to a designated space and your personal shopper delivers your items right to your vehicle. Fresh, fast, and affordable. It's all in the bag. Ingles. Low prices. Love the savings. Mac, it's week three. We got to talk some of these games. We're also going to give our underdog picks throughout this episode. Make sure you use our code GMPOD today to sign up for underdog, the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Right now, Mac, as I see on my app, there's a 30% profit boost add to any entry, and you can just apply that. I actually did that last week when I won, by the way. So I got a little more money. Yeah, that's right, that's Mac. That's right. AG is so rich. Guys, if you want to you know, kind of peel back the curtain on how Gramlick and MacLane stays afloat financially. Yeah. <laughs> it's all off of Kelly's winnings. You're welcome. That's how, that's how we stay operating in the black. That's how we stay yeah. there. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I, I do what I can for the pod and Mac, I'm actually going to throw in, I know you have your picks as well. I'm going to throw some of my picks in as we talk about these games. So I actually have two picks oh. for this game. So let's get into our big four breakdown. Um, Cause there are four really big games this weekend and then we'll kind of do a speed round at the end. Boston College at Missouri, if you missed our full preview of that with 
the QB1, Tuami, Tommy Castellanos. Go check it out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you um, consume our show. Boston College at Missouri. The spread is down to 16. Missouri is a 16-point favorite. Total 54 and a half. 12.45 p.m. So weird kickoff on SEC Network. 11.45 a.m. local time. And, Mac, I have to shout out intern Nick, our guy. He does great research, gets us ready for these games. This line, and it, the line was at 16 and a half. Now it's at 16. Okay, I get that. But this is, Nick came up with this. This is crazy. Missouri is 24 and 0 against the spread when they are a 16 and a half point favorite or better. Okay. And then Boston College is 13 and 0 against the spread when they are 16 and a half point underdogs or worse. What's so gonna yeah. what's going to happen here, Mac? That's interesting. <laughs> What is the uh, what's the push situation? What's that? There is none, right? Because it's no, they haven't pushed because there's no yeah. you know yeah. and one Can't. on these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't. That's okay. so interesting. Uh, something's got to give. Something's yeah. got to give. What's it going to be? You got this immovable object versus uh, unstoppable force, and and they're going to collide right here together. Oh, I, lo- I, think I love it's also the science. Give me the science. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also fascinating. Uh, this is BC's first ranked game since yes. 2018 that uh, they've against been Clemson. Ranked. Yeah, right, that they've exactly, been exactly. So excited for that. Excited for these guys. I think, uh, you know, if you listen to our episode, it really is going to come down to Tommy and not, not necessarily mm-hmm. Tommy having to make a crazy play, right? Like right. him pushing the ball, but him just controlling the offense. And it, it's so interesting because, you know, I think he is one of the most electric players in college football, but at the same sense, like his coach is, is kind of, asking him a little bit to be a game manager and to understand the game and to get it correctly. And, you know, that's why I think it it is so interesting. You know, we, you know, put a negative connotation at times on the word game manager, but truly that's what you're doing at the next level. That's what you're doing in the NFL. You you are making sure that the guys around you thrive and that you don't make a mistake uh, to, to really ruin the game there. So, it's been fascinating to watch his growth. Um, clearly, this is going to be a game where he's having to rip it the most. You know, a lot of people would have thought, okay, that, that's going to be that Florida State game probably, but it wasn't. I mean, they, they kind of played bully ball, and you look at his stats mm-hmm. and the things that he was asked to do. I just think because of both offenses uh, in this game, and it's interesting to me, the over-under is 53 and a half. I have to mm-hmm. think it's going to be a little more than that. It's gone down. So I'm pretty comfortable with the over there. Um I think we see both these teams really rely on the quarterback's arm and what they're able to do. I like the over as well, Mac. I think this game's going to be a little higher scoring. My biggest question mark or key in this game really comes down to the Boston College defense. I think that the offense is going to be able to score and is going to look pretty good. But to me, can this defense keep up? And this is such a cliche, so I'm not trying to play into it. But I think (laughs) Missouri, the way they are constructed, their speed on the outside is really, really exciting right. and it's what makes yeah. them great so i'm not really saying it's not the sec speed um <laughs> but specifically for missouri with burden and weiss they're two big time wide receivers who they use in all sorts of ways jet sweeps whatever and both guys are good to go they had some issues right. um against buffalo but um their coach has said that um, they're good to go but i'm intrigued to see how bc can slow those guys down so right when it comes to underdog by the way i have luther burden higher than 0.5 rushing or receiving touchdowns. I think that guy's going to get in the end zone. Yeah. He, that's just what he does. He, he left in the second quarter against Buffalo with an illness, still got in the end zone. So he's yeah. going to. But, Mac, I do like Tommy Castellanos mm-hmm. higher than 152.5 passing yards. That yep. seems low to me. And I, I get what you're saying. I think that underdog has adjusted to – Tommy being maybe a little more of a manager as we've talked about, as he talked about on our show, Mm -hmm. but I still think he gets near or above that 200 passing yards mark. And like I said, I think the BC offense is going to score. The defense worries me a little bit. Well, and you know, what's interesting is Boston college has played a a power five team, right? And now that power five team is struggling and you know, things of that nature, power four, excuse me. Well, pac 12 might be back. Who knows? They're back. We might be right back to five next year. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but, you know, I, I think when you when you look at it, there is something to that, like, who have you played sure. and, and what have you done? And I know, you know, Mizzou, number one defense in the world right now, baby, playing yeah. Buffalo and Kent State. Awesome. Uh, this is going to be a big-time test for them as well. So at least one 
has seen something that looked a little bit like the other in regards to Boston mm-hmm. College. Missouri has not. They, 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 they haven't seen anything like this yet this year. So, but top six team for a reason. You know, I think a lot of people excited about what Missouri can do. Obviously, they have so much coming back. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see. But I, I do think defensively, you know, we have to see that speed because Missouri is going to be out on the edges, spread it out wide, try to do a lot of things. And then you have that power, you know, from Noel coming right back at you. Mm-hmm. So interesting to see. I, I feel comfortable about both lines of scrimmage for Boston College. And I'm with you. Okay. With underdog fantasy, give me Tommy over the passing number. I like that higher than the passing number. I like that a lot. Mac, I, I think Missouri wins the game. I would love to see BC win this game. Cards on the table. I think that would shake things up a lot in college football. I think BC would become maybe the story of college football through three weeks. But I do think BC covers. I think 16 is too many points. I like that it's a noon game. You know, Missouri, good environment, not great. Sorry, Missouri fans. I like Boston College to cover the 16 points. And I like the over on the total. I'm with you, Mac. I think we're going to see some points. Right. A hundred percent. I think we see that place. Um, you know, t- it is too many. It's, it's a lot. It's a big number. Um, and again, I think that having not seen anybody like this yet, that matters. And maybe it's a little shell shock early. Who knows? You know, obviously being at home really helps you in the things that you're able to do. But I think BC covers. And really, if defense, if they can get a turnover or two, or if they can make a stop, mm-hmm. look out. I'm, I'm not I, – when I have Tommy Castellanos on my team, I feel good about anything that we're doing moving forward. So cannot yeah. wait to see it. Cannot wait to see it. Brady Cook is a really good, very experienced quarterback yeah. from Missouri. I'd be very surprised. Old. If, very old. Yeah, he's, he's been there for five years. And he's been at one place for five years, which is cool. Uh, I'd be surprised if he has that consequential turnover. But right. it's college football. Rip that ball out, baby. See. Rip it out. All right, Mac, a game that I think is going to be and feel different than the BC Missouri game is the backyard brawl, West Virginia at Pittsburgh. This game is on Saturday, 1230 p.m. on ESPN2. So I think, you know, this week we've talked about, we've joked that game day is going to Kentucky and South, or not Kentucky. Oh my gosh, LSU, South Carolina, uh, same thing. Uh, So I think that BC, for example, if they were to win and even Pitt, if they can win this game, start three and oh. You can make some noise this week because there aren't that many other good games. So I think this is a big opportunity for Pittsburgh playing on ESPN2. What's so interesting about this game, Pitt-West Virginia last year was hideous, Mac. Do you remember that game? Oh, my gosh. It was do not watch. Like, it it hurt (laughs) to watch. To me, West Virginia is very similar to what they were last year. Same quarterback. Pittsburgh has changed everything. They're trying to be different. They've brought in a whole new offense, Eli Holstein. It's different. So this game should look different to me. It shouldn't be as hideous. And I like that one team in Pitt is really trying to do something different. And I want to see how that looks against a, well, Cincinnati's a power four team, but against uh, their rival. Yeah, no, I'm excited for that. And all bets are off. I mean, it it wouldn't matter if both these teams are undefeated. Both these teams haven't won a game. This is the Super Bowl of this area, right? The backyard brawl, a game that should be played every single year. I'm not sure why it's not. Uh, And hopefully we can resolve that sooner than later. Some recent movement, who knows? Maybe both sides can agree and and figure things out. But uh, I love Pittsburgh in this game. And and it's fascinating to me that they are dogs. Um, Even more fascinating, even more fascinating, uh, the matchup predictor, according to ESPN, is actually favoriting Pitt. Pitt is the favorite in regards to that. So you've got kind of split here between ESPN and Vegas, and uh, I'm leaning Pittsburgh for sure. I mean, I love their offense, think they are extremely explosive, Uh, a a team that really has figured it out recently, and and you're finding out who your playmakers are. And the good thing is you had a a big-time game where you're able to score 50-something points, and then you have another game where you face all kinds of adversity, have to come storming back. Uh, and make something happen. So I think there's a lot of belief right now. I think there's a ton of confidence with Eli Holstein. And you've got a guy like Reed who came from Western Carolina, was a bona fide superstar there, was interesting. How is the transition going to work out? He's been exceptional as yeah, just a yeah. playmaker, as a receiver, as a running back, as a returner. Uh, that dude, three phases, excellent, you know, at football. And then Kananta Mumfield finally has a QB that can throw him the ball, put him in positions to win, and he's taking full advantage of it. So I love to see that 
You want to see Kenny Johnson take another step. Maybe that happens in this game. Um, the, the fascinating thing about all of this is that I need the Pittsburgh defense to step up. Yeah, <laughs> when do you ever, when have we ever had to say that, you know, on a, on a consistent basis? So excited to see what those guys can do. Uh, can you apply pressure? Can you do all the things you need to do? But I feel great about Pittsburgh in this game. Give me, give me the Panthers. I do too. And I know, you know, you're always thinking, what is, what does Vegas know? right? That West Virginia is favored in this game. West Virginia has won four of the last five games against Pittsburgh. So maybe there's something there because they've had a lot of success in the backyard brawl lately. However, West Virginia, this is from intern Nick, they're one in five against the spread when they are favored on the road since 2020. So they don't cover when they're on the (laughs) road and they're a favorite. Now, some of that is being in the big 12 and traveling literally across the continent to play all your road games. But I think this one, and again, we may look stupid, but I think this one's kind of obvious. Yeah, I think Pitt's going to win. I think Pitt's yeah. going to cover. We need this offense to continue to um, show what they can do in this new look. But the defense to me is very important, Mac. Penn State ran all over West Virginia. Right. Like 222 right. yards. West Virginia could not run the ball. They had three turnovers in that game. They looked really bad. Yeah. So I need this Pitt defense to stop the run. If West exactly. Virginia is able to run on you, I think we're going to have even more concern about this pit defense. This is not the pit defense that they have been, but with this offense, you have some more leeway. You have some more room, right? right? So can you look improved? But give me pit, Mac. Give me pit in this game. I like Come that. on. I think the, the other interesting thing is just, you know, who steps up behind you know, Reed, you know, who's going to step up and, you know, be really the true number two behind Desmond Reed there. Because, you know, right now, obviously, Eli, the second leading rusher with 15 rushes, yeah. the next is is down to, to eight and then four. And so, you know, really looking who who's going to be that, who's going to emerge as that, um, you know, because it, it's hard. I mean, Desmond Reed is, is the all-purpose yard leader right now after two weeks. And, and so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who steps up there but I do think it all, as you just kind of alluded to, comes down to the pit defense and who do they want to be and what can they do. And as you you mentioned, Mac, Reed leads the nation in all-purpose yeah. yards after two crazy. weeks, which is absolutely Very crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're going to need a big game from him. So we're taking pit. Let's let's see what happens there. I think, again, big opportunities this week to make a statement, Good. make things happen for these ACC teams. Let's talk about the game that you will be at, Eric McLean, Maryland. At Virginia, this is an old ACC rivalry that we love to see. These teams have played, what, close to 90 times, yeah. if I'm doing my math right, maybe 80. <laughs> and, of course, quick math. <laughs> yeah, 45 plus 32. Um, they used to play all the time in the ACC, and Maryland left, and et cetera. But Maryland's a favorite in this game. Maryland's favored by two and a half points. Saturday, 8 o'clock, ACC Network. The total is at 55. Maryland lost to Michigan State last week. That is a little concerning because I don't think Michigan State is very good. Um, And they gave up a bunch of yards to Michigan State. They they let a receiver go for basically 200 yards. (laughs) To me, this is a game of like, okay, middle to bottom of the pack, and maybe Virginia is more middle of the pack ACC. Can you beat a middle of the pack Big Ten team? Because all we ever hear about is power two, Big Ten, blah, blah, blah. The Big Ten has honestly looked pretty bad. So far. So I think this game could go a long way, Mac. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I think, uh, you know, a couple of things, number one, when you, when you look at Virginia and Calandria and fields are looking at how many yards did Nick Marsh have? Uh, he had 200 almost. Exactly. Okay. Uh, fields. Yeah. We're going to dial it up. This guy's going to go big and, uh, absolutely deliver. I can't wait to see that in person. And, you know, just the continued growth from, you know, this team, another team, uh, in Virginia that had to make a comeback, had to storm back to win a game. And quite frankly, KG, I don't think they did that last year. You know, they, they mm-hmm. had so many close games. They just couldn't finish or the comeback was great. And then it just wasn't enough or they couldn't hold on one or the other. And so now except, to see that. Except at Chapel Hill. But anyway, continue. Sure. That's right. <laughs> you know, but but those one score games and now you're able to flip it and you're able to take a step. And And what does that look like? You know, moving forward. So excited about this, excited to be there for the first time uh, as the huddle and, and see that environment. It's a Navy out, so it's going to be all Navy uniforms. Uh, I might do a Navy out, too, with my uniform, so we'll match the team. And excited to see Coach E, but I think you and I both just 
Love watching Calandria. Um, the way that he plays. I mean, I'm doing a tape of him, and he's just so explosive. Like, he's a guy that can move out of the pocket, use his legs to kill you, um, but also has a, a nice arm. I mean, there was a couple of plays where they're on the opposite hash. It's third and 11. He is making the longest possible throw, mm-hmm. like a quick out to the bottom of the the numbers, drills it. I mean, just hammers it. And so, you know, to see him make all these throws, to see him continue to grow up, um, you have in a game like this, you have to dial down the crazy plays. Like, and I know that's just a piece of it, but you've got to check that and dial it down. But it, it is who he is. So expect that to continue to grow. Expect Malachi to do his thing. Um, and then Kobe Pace, you know, can he continue to emerge, be that running back that we saw, you know, his sophomore year at Clemson where he was just really electric? Well, Mac, it's funny you bring up Calandria needing to kind of tone down the crazy plays, at least in this game. He really didn't against Wake. I thought this year he's obviously been improved, but it just reminds me I wanted to look up and and remember his stat line at Maryland last year when he got the start. And I remember texting you. It was the beginning of the game. UVA's up 14-7, and Calandria's wheeling and dealing. And then he just falls apart. He had kind of a freshman uh, second half, if you will. But he finished the game 23 of 39 for 263, one touchdown and three interceptions. If you have – if Calandria has three interceptions this weekend, Virginia's not going to win. But I don't think he's – he's not there anymore. He's not. He has grown up a lot. I think that is obvious. And to your point, Mac, I just love watching Calandria play football. Did you know, because intern Nick put this in our in our notes, did you know Kevin Sumlin is the co-offensive coordinator for Maryland? I only knew because of the notes. <laughs> that's the only way I knew. Yeah. I was trying to remember that, and I was like, dang, okay, Kevin Sumlin. That's a name you don't remember all He's the time. Back, He's back. And did you know Maryland has not lost a game outside the Big Ten since 2019? That That is interesting. Now, I'm not saying that they have – challenged themselves sure, as much sure. um but they've done very well in the non-conference they're 15 and 1 in the non-con under coach Loxley Time and of course they back. beat Virginia last year they beat Virginia Time last year but I think two. this as we've discussed Mac this Virginia team I know it's only two weeks they feel so different they feel so right. different than last year 100 percent, and I think that's important and I think they uh you know, it's just one of those things where you continue to grow as a team. You're going through the necessary steps, and and this is the next one. This is what you're able to do. do. So two and a half at home, g- give me Virginia again. I know I sound like a homer, but I just think Calandry is that good. I think quarterback play matters, and I think you have a guy right there that isn't going to let you lose. At least he's going to go down swinging. Mac, I'm going to tell you this. I'm picking Virginia because, as I've told you, I've okay. adopted Virginia. You, you Virginia is my first. team. I love this team. I watched all of Virginia Wake. I was locked in. Other people were watching Clemson. Other people were watching NC State. I said Virginia Wake. I need to watch my Cavs. So I'm picking Virginia. That being said, you know I like to play my favorite game of what makes more sense. What makes more sense, Mac? Two and one Maryland and uh-huh. two and one Virginia or one and two Maryland and three and oh Virginia. The first one makes more sense, but forget oh. sense. Forget sense. I'm taking Virginia. I'm taking Virginia. Wahoo wah. That was a roller coaster. My god. I gosh. know. Sorry. Just up and down, up and down. Wahoo wah. Okay. Max, speaking of roller coaster, let's talk Florida State. I don't like this game. I don't game know if this is a roller coaster. Roller coasters go back up. I don't like this game. Is it this going is our back last up? game. This is our last game in the Big Four <laughs> breakdown. Memphis at Florida State. Florida State is a six and a half point favorite. Last I saw. This game is at noon on ESPN. All these games really are early, except for Virginia, Maryland. Oh. And Memphis looks to be a pretty good team. They're 2-0. and They just beat Troy. They're one of those teams, one of those in that group, vying for that group of five playoff spot, at least super yeah. early. We'll see. Um, they have a very experienced veteran quarterback. They are coached by Ryan Silverfield, who is really good friends with Mike Norvell and was on Mike Norvell's staff at Memphis. So they're very tight. And Florida State has just frankly looked bad, Mac. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you about Florida State. Tell me your initial thoughts on this game. Um, it, it's it's a terrifying game. You're scared personally. to watch. I'm scared, scared to, to watch. watch. The fact that it's at noon jacks it up two notches for me. Minimum. I know. I hate it. Hate it. Uh, <laughs> and you've just been sitting around all week, yeah, thinking about how bad you are. Well, actually, Mac, you've been having water gun fights. Oh yeah, that was crazy. 
that you showed me that. Um, you think I guess Any Florida State like, fan listening knows what I'm guy, talking about. Yeah, does that guy like still have a job or did they scrap that? Was bad. That, you think? that was bad. It was just weird. It was weird and embarrassing, especially without yeah. context, which I know the, the point of it was to be a distraction while you're trying yeah. to catch a punt. Do it anywhere else where a camera's not rolling. Like uh, anywhere uh, else. Anywhere else. Anyways, anyway, anyway, uh, I, I'm just excited to see how these guys respond. I mean, that they are in the really, really worst possible spot yeah. that we could have. I couldn't even imagine this from Florida State. What I expected, you know, to see from them this year, thought that offensive line and that defense was going to be sick, thought they were going to be able to run the ball at will. Hasn't been the case. They have been bullied on both sides of the ball. Memphis is licking their chops saying, we can do that. <laughs> we can get you running yeah. and try yeah. to push you out of the way. Um, it's it's going to be really interesting to see just what is the game plan? Because I don't know the identity of Florida State. Right? And they don't either. They don't Good have point. one. Wh- who are we? What are we going to be? And this is close. Like similar to NC State, the glass is lifted off the red button and our hands are just like this, ready to push it at any moment. I mean, that's that's what we're doing. And I think this is almost a win at all costs type of thing of what gave us the best chance. You had a week, two weeks to prepare. You had a bye week where let's just go. I, I would have scrimmaged. I would have probably tackled and just find out who, who are we? What do we want? Can we throw the ball downfield consistently? What plays do we like? What do we want to run? And, and hey, offensive line, let's go. Go to work. Like, who, what are you doing? You know, and so I don't know. It, it's going to be really interesting just to see KG who emerges in this game. What is Coach Atkins back yet, or is he still gone? Is he does he have one more game suspended? Do you know off the top Ooh, of your head? Good question. Good question. Let's see. I can't remember. I think that's a big piece. Just having his presence on the the sideline. I mean, I know he's been able to coach and practice and and do these type of things, but he's out for the first three games, so, so he's, he's not still back. out of this one. So. You know, it's going to be really weird just to see, you know, who do they want to be. And I think it, it's terrible that you lost, you know, Lucas, who I thought was a, mm-hmm. a really good, you know, kind of weapon and, and someone I wanted to see more of. Um, so I don't know. It's it's a w- yeah. really weird spot for FSU. Yeah. I think that is a is a big bummer for Florida State yeah. overall. Um, a guy that, yeah, he had three catches on the year, but he was someone that you thought maybe could, could do something for you. I, I'm going to tell you this, Mac. And you and I both know, I'm going to welcome Florida State fans into the, the DJU experience because Mac and I have been there. So when times got rough, one thing Clemson did is they just doubled down and ran the ball. And I think that's what you have to do if you're Florida State. I think you have to pick your moments. We had Will um, Shipley, though. I ain't no Will Shipley on that team. I understand. I understand. Roydell Williams, Toa Feely, these guys have to step up. And you can run it with DJ. I think you need to run it more with DJ. And then you try to pick your moments where you can take a shot. But I think you have to line up and run the football. Yeah, I, I think that's what you have to do. And you have to yeah. say, we're bigger than Memphis. We should be able to dominate the lines of scrimmage. We'll see. This is, as we've said, a good group of five team. But you have to run the ball. You have to. And I think the biggest thing to Mac Let's not pretend like all that's happened with Florida State is the offense's fault. The defense has not looked good. This is a defense that we were really excited about. Florida State, through two games, and they've played two Power 5 teams, or Power 4, Power (laughs) 4. Florida State is one of the worst rush defenses in the country, giving up an astonishing 226 and a half rushing yards per game through two games. So, of course, Memphis is going to try to run the ball, but... I think a lot of it comes down to lines of scrimmage. I think you have to be able to stop the run. And then if I'm Florida State, my game plan is very much around running the ball. Right. You have to, Mac. But maybe they can't because that's what I you thought was from Street. That's you what I thought to. we were seeing. Yeah. I guess just force it. Like literally run it 40 yeah. times, which I said against Georgia Tech, but you didn't do but it. But also run um, DJ. Use him yeah. as a weapon. Use him as a weapon. That can open but things see, up. You can't do like counter. You can't do draws like power downhill like yeah. go yeah. go i can't wait for that locomotive to crank up i you gotta hit it you gotta be a f-150 and just go mm-hmm. that's all you gotta do because you ain't no ferrari for sure um but you know the other interesting thing which i am just 
so taken aback by. I was watching DJ highlights the other day from his freshman year. I know. It was so good. So BC good. And Notre and Dame like, the confidence, the throws, the footwork. I mean, it was, it is crazy. And I feel terrible and I hope he can still find his way. Yeah. But um, yeah. that dude was as talented as I've ever seen, you know, with what he could do sure. with the football and the effortless throws. I mean, bombs. Yeah. It was yeah. crazy. So we'll see. Who knows? Uh, I'm terrified for this game. What's the line? Let me see. I'm the trying line, to find The last that I've seen is Florida State is a six and a half six point and favorite. And half. Give me Memphis. This game is at I'm home. Taking, I'm taking Memphis. Give me Memphis. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking Memphis as well. And I, I just can't that. do it. it. Feels terrible. I can't. I just. I but need here's to the see deal. It. I think Memphis is going to win. I think Memphis is going to win. Give me money line, Memphis. Yeah. I hate this. I hate. I hate this. it too. I hate I've got to see it. You have to. I have to be proven that. You know. Right. The, because everything that you just said of what they have to do, they can't do it. They have sure. not done it all sure. year. But again, maybe this is a, a group of level team, and you should. But this is also a team that a lot of people have in their playoff. <laughs> so what are we doing? What are we doing? I, I hate this. I hate that I even put this in the big four that we have to talk about it this much. That was my mistake. Well, we have to. We have to because it's a huge game. <laughs> you and I both have so much respect for Mike Norvell. Yeah. And I think what he's done at Florida State so far, especially last season, is just an incredible coaching job. To take them from where they were when he took over the program to yeah. ACC champions 13-0. This is maybe, no, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's it's a bigger task because what he did was incredible. But yeah. you've had, he's had two weeks, a little less than two weeks. What can Mike Norvell do? Right. What can he scheme up for this offense? Because we've talked about him as an offensive mastermind. Yeah. What can he do for this team yeah. to help them win this game? Because I think really, truly, we always joke, like you're taking it one week at a time. I think right now Florida State has to absolutely take it one week at a time. And so no that's there's there's so much intrigue with this game. But to me, I want to can Mike Norvell work a miracle? That's basically right. what we're asking. Right. Can he work a miracle and, and have Florida State win yeah. this game? Think, I'd be, I mean, I'd be, I'd be so impressed. Think how personal this game is for him. He can't yes, lose to exactly. Memphis. He cannot lose to Memphis. It's crazy. And but that's his that guy, story, the head coach. I, that's his I, guy. I just I got to see it, and I ain't seen it. So let's go Memphis. Are they the Tigers? Okay. Let's see a Tiger. Where are they? They're the Tigers, yeah. Let's go Tigers. I'm not going to say let's, let's go stay. Memphis. Rolls but... off the tongue. Rolls off the tongue well for me. Yeah, true. <laughs> All right, we're both taking Memphis there. Mac, speed round, okay? Come let's on. run through these games very quickly. I would like to start with three games that I have put in the you better not category. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're bringing back you better not. We've got... Louisiana Tech at NC State. NC State's a 21 and a half point favorite noon on ACC Network. We've this got is UConn. This, this is classified yeah. as Oh, you it's in there, Mac. Because I, oh, no. I don't trust NC State. So it's in there. <laughs> UConn at Duke. Duke's a 16 and a half point favorite, 6 p.m. ACC Network Extra. And no Virginia worries. Tech at Old Dominion. Why, Jesus? Uh, Virginia Tech's a 14 and a half point favorite, 6 o'clock ESPN Plus. Those are my You Better Nots, Mac. Do you have any thoughts on my yeah. You Better Nots? Uh, I think. I would probably only put one in that category, and that's Virginia Tech. I th I think okay. they are in all capital letters. You better not <laughs> like because guess what? You're owing two the last two times you've been there. You ain't won there, and you're going back. So I don't think anybody feels great right now oh. in Hokie Nation about what they've seen. No. Uh, so yeah, this is terrifying. Um, I need my man drones to to hook me up on fantasy. Go over. 200 rush or passing yards, whatever it was there. I need that. Um, I'm pretty confident. I don't know why. Maybe not to cover. I don't think I'm confident to cover. Uh, but I'm confident NC State wins. Um, but now I'm, now that I'm talking about it, I'm terrified. They're in this too. They're in this. I feel good about okay. Duke. Duke will I don't. I don't you think I don't Duke's have gonna... uh, I do feel better about Duke. I, I am now terrified about this NC State game. Why did you say that? What's now, happening? Okay. I have a question for you because you were not a part of many blowout losses, like truly maybe one or two in your career, but yeah, I'm thinking two. back to one Florida state in uh, 2013. Horrific. What? Oh, great. We can remind the Knowles of good things. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, there you Keep go. On. There you go. So what, like, what is it for NC state fans? What is it like for that team right now? What, what, yeah. what's the biggest key for them to just 
put that put that game behind them. They have to. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting. The score very similar. We lost fifty one yeah. to fourteen <laughs> at home. Uh, top ten matchup, uh, and just were embarrassed. Game day, ABC primetime, horribly embarrassed. Uh, so very similar to, to what you guys dealt with. The key for us then was, okay, we're not there yet. <laughs> we're not at that level. Like those guys are that good. And you have to understand so much is, is still in front of you. So NC state, I, I said this on Monday, but silver lining, you're exactly where I thought you'd be record wise. Now, did it look the way I thought it would to get here? No, absolutely not. Little, little worried. Like I said, hand is hovering over the red button, but everything is out in front of you can still clearly win an ACC championship, can still clearly get to a playoff, all of those things. But you, take my glasses off so you know what I'm talking about, you better get it together. Like this offensive line, embarrassing me. I do not like what I'm seeing. The run game, the lack thereof, embarrassing me. And and I don't know what you want to chalk it up to. Miss assignments, being overpowered, just not as good as I thought. Play Whatever you want to call it. Wolfpack Nation, let me know what you think it is. Uh... You've got to get that right because there's some good talent on that line. There's clearly the talent in the backfield. I've seen it other places, and I've seen it, what it can look like. Uh, You've got to figure that piece out. And then Grayson just has to calm down. Just go back to the basics, two hands on the football, two hands on the football, and just do your thing. You are a great player, and you have really good weapons. Hopefully this is a get-right game because next week, going to be a monster we'll talk about that next week but you better get ready because uh it's going to be more of the same from a week ago if you don't get your mind right well said mac well said i hope maybe they can <laughs> use that emotional. as inspiration a little emotional about this offensive line kind of hurts me I, to be honest i understand gotta take the glasses off sometimes uh okay i don't think we're really going to say much about san diego state cal ball state miami vmi georgia tech north carolina central unc just win the games but Let's finish here. Number five, Ole Miss at Wake Forest. 6.30 p.m. on the CW, which means they're going to have the ref cam, which I'm excited about. The ref cam, wow. Yeah, they have that on CW. I just There was one specifically in NC State Clemson last year where the ref got run over, and it was really fun to watch. I love that. Well, he was fine. He was fine. Okay, Ole Miss is a 22.5-point favorite at Wake Forest. Mac, is there any way Wake Forest covers? Covers. Mm -hmm. I am very confident that they do not cover. Um, <laughs> now, here's the deal. Hank Bachmeyer is spinning that thing. How, how much back are they? And what's interesting, I kind of had in my mind that these guys have played before. That was Georgia Tech, and you reminded me of that. Yeah. That was Georgia Tech. Um, I don't – no, I don't feel good about it. And I hate that I'm saying that. I think Lane okay. Kiffin is going to try to score 100 points. I think he'll try to score 100. That sounds very Lane Kiffin. And <laughs> Ole Miss – because they haven't played anybody yet, they're trying. They would try to make a big statement with this game, score a bunch of points. I get that. Yeah. Would you feel better if Wake had beaten Virginia? Because really, Wake should have beaten Virginia. Like, would you feel more confident if they had just gotten the W? No. no. Okay. No, I wouldn't have. I tend to agree. Let me but... just tell you this. I saw <laughs> this is, I'm not going to say any names, but if you know, you know. I saw some safety play in that Virginia game where dudes were getting broke off. And it wasn't like super mm-hmm. hardcore routes. Ole Miss is going to attack that 10 out of 10 times. Like they're going right at those two dudes. And I mean, it was like wide open touchdowns that cover four, do your job, looked like man to man on the second one and just like gone, like lost in the sauce from a tight end. And I was like, oh, Jackson Dart's going to light that up. So we'll see. Who knows? Now, offensively, maybe you can go shot for shot with them. I mean, that's fine. I'm cool with the track meet, but everything I heard about Ole Miss in the preseason was their D-line is finally at that Georgia-Bama like big stage where that was the reason they always lost to those guys. Now they feel confident about it. I don't think that bears well for Wake Forest. We'll see. We'll see. But I, I just – sorry, Wake. I love you. I just don't think this is the one. Let's finish on a positive note, Mac. As we said earlier, and we gave out our underdog picks throughout. If you haven't seen them or you missed them, go on Twitter, go on Instagram. We'll put them out there. But I do think this could be a really big weekend for the ACC. I think BC, Virginia, and Pitt, those games are honestly fascinating. So I'm intrigued to see how it goes. This was a fun episode. I am too. 
I am too. And I think, you know, we get to see Cam Ward play again, which is always a silver lining. Love to see that guy. I think he's going to dominate. Uh, and, and Heisman front runner right now, maybe. Who knows? Let's I think go. he's in the top three. We'll see. Anyway, appreciate you guys always for tuning in. Sorry there was a little negative Nancy in this episode. We'll do our best to, to get rid of that. But it's just, it's where we are right now. We got to figure it out. We, we, we say it. Matt, we got it. We got to be honest. That's we got to tell them like we see real. it, you know? We're, we're calling oh, it like as we see it. That's right. Uh, but anyway, appreciate okay. you guys always tuning in. Go over to YouTube, subscribe, jump on this channel with us. Jump in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Are we way off on some of these? Or, or are you guys kind of in the same boat on, on what we're feeling? We'd love to hear all about that. Um, a lot of bye weeks for teams that have great you know mm -hmm. energy right now that are just kind of sitting at home. I know nobody wants to, to kind of feel that, but there you are. And, uh, of course, the OGs over on Apple Podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe as well. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all.